What's going on, Wayne? Well, not much, man. How you doing? I'm doing great. Uh, are we good to get this rolling here? <coughs> yeah, man. Well, uh, everybody listening, this is Chandler Sorrells with The Ring, The Cage, and The Stage, and today we have none other than the man of the road, Wayne Hancock. Um, Wayne, I know you played Nashville last night, and you said it was a pretty good crowd turnout. Yeah, yeah, it was a good crowd there. Yeah, didn't happen to uh, run into old Shelton, did you? No, I never see Shelton, man. I, I, I know he's somewhere around here somewhere, but... I think I he moved out to Jolton, but I uh, haven't really heard much from him in the last four years. Nobody has. Yeah, I think he... I got a a friend that does my web... Whatever, my Facebook... I don't even... My Facebook page, because I don't go online. I never go online. I'm like totally anti-computer, but uh, he said that uh, he thought he was, he just wanted to go back to being Sheldon, you know? Right, just kind of didn't be so much life for a while. Yeah, the, no, didn't want to be Hank third and anymore, and you know, man, it's, it's quite stressful when you're on the road, and especially if you're dealing with big record companies. Um, big record companies kind of, they're very controlling, you know? Right, and he used to tour all the time. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, and it's uh, it's, it's not for everybody, man, you know. I got it's you. Tough uh, ass job out here. Right. I mean, it ain't any tougher than working. I don't even look at it. It's not, even, it's not work to me, but, you know, you're you're away from your family. If you, if you have one, if you have a, any kind of relationship, that's always uh, in jeopardy a lot of times, you know. Yes, sir. A lot of people just don't like... Uh, once they've been on a tour bus, they don't really like going back to to being in a van, you know. I hear so. that. You cite uh Hank Williams, Hank Snow, Jimmy Rogers, and a few others as your influences because they were part of your parents' record collection, right? Right. Um, I think I I did not. Last time I saw you in Nashville, my wife and I were not married yet. But a little fun fact: uh, her mother is married to Reverend Jimmy Snow. Are you familiar with him? Uh, no, no. Uh, that is Hank Snow's only son, his only child, and he ended up becoming a preacher. He he was good friends with Elvis Presley, and um, he did a couple rock and roll recordings of Milk Cow Blues and one other, but uh. I just wanted to share that with you since Hank Snow is one of your favorites. Basically, by law and by marriage, Hank Snow is now my father-in-law since my wife's mother's married to Reverend Jimmy Snow. Well, that's cool. He, he did a famous sermon on rock and roll. I don't know if you've seen it, where he's like, the beat, the beat, the beat. Yeah, yeah, that's on the, uh, I got one of the uh, rock and roll CDs I have actually has that on there. I was wondering who that was. I, we knew it was some preacher, but we didn't know exactly who it was. Saying that. Well, now you know that is Hank Snow's only son doing that. Um, another question I wanted to ask you: uh, What's up with uh, that story about you had your CDs one of one time taken along a space shuttle mission? Oh, that was uh, that was uh, um, that's what Daddy wants. They took the uh, or they used the song. I don't think they took the CD with it, but they used the. They use the uh, song to wake up the astronauts. Oh. And so, because, uh, you know, I, had the, I put the little bugle call rag, uh, or the bugle call on the front of the project. I always tell people, I, I, I said, I borrowed that from bugle call rag. Of course, you know, you know, just on the very front of the, uh, that's what Daddy wants from uh, that particular cut. You know, it starts out with the da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da type thing, and that's what they used to wake them up with. I feel yeah, that. Uh, I got a, do, do you have me on speakerphone, Mr. Hancock? Yes, I do. Uh, okay, I, I'm just trying to capture the, the recording as best I can, but I, I think it's going to be all right. I mean, I can put you on regular phone, but i got to hold to my head. Yeah, if you can, that's all right. I, I just don't want, like, the people to have trouble hearing me. I just, But I didn't know if you were busy doing something. It just kind of sounded like it. Yeah, I had a, the TV was on. I, I put it back on the, the regular phone now. Oh, okay. Yeah, that, that sounds much better. Um, what all instruments do you know how to play besides the guitar? And uh, 
I was watching some other interviews earlier, and that unique style of rhythm strumming you have, uh, that was from Tom Dooley? Well, I started playing, I mean, no, I just started, when I, the first song I ever played was Tom Dooley, you know, that's what you have in your little song books. And I just, uh, I just learned how to play on my own, man. Yeah? You know. Do you play anything else, like piano, bass, anything? I used to play piano when I was a kid, but I forgot everything I learned. You know, you know I played by ear, and uh, I played trumpet when I was younger, and I still have a trumpet in my house. Right I blow it, blow it every now and then, but I'm not good enough to play it in front of anybody. You know, the only thing I'm really good at is playing guitar and singing, you know. Yep, your voice is quite an instrument. But cool. As a music fan, what are some of the best live concerts you've been lucky to witness or enjoyed mostly in your life, just watching from the audience? Uh, I, uh, Texas Playboys. Um, the old, you know, Bob Wills is Bob Wills' old uh, band. Of course, Bob Wills has been gone for some years, but the Texas Playboys still play. The ones that are still left alive. They always put on a great show. Um, and, of course, I've seen other uh, other bands as well. I, I'm a big fan of uh, Big Standing and Fly Ride Boys. And oh, a lot of, you know, and then there was Ray Kondo put on a pretty good shows. Of course, I'm, I'm mainly talking about people that I know that I would go see play. Uh, Brian Sesser, when he had his big orchestra, it, it was they were a lot of fun to, to see, you know. I've never had the chance to see Brian Setzer yet, but I think he's doing a little Stray Cats reunion pretty soon, isn't he? You know, I, I don't know. You would, Your guess would be as good as mine. Right on. You have been with uh, Bloodshot Records for a little while now. Uh, do you plan on staying with them for the foreseeable future? Yeah, man. I mean, they're happy with me. I'm happy with them. They don't tell me how to make music. I don't tell them how to sell records. Uh-huh. You know, I got been with them a lot since 2001. So, oh, okay. Yeah, another few years, and it'll be uh, 20 years I've been with them. Uh, if they treat you well, then that's good. Um, I know you, before you got going in music, you already had some experience going outside of the country because you were in the Marines and. They had you over in Japan at one point. I was just curious, what are some of your favorite places to visit outside of the United States, whether if you're on tour or just for fun? Um, I love going to Spain, man. Yeah? Yeah, any, just about any part of Spain I love going to. Um, Australia is fun to go play, but it's so far away, man, you know? What do you like and, over there? Pretty, pretty much just about everything. You know, the people are cool. The food's good. You know, it's, you know, it's just, it, you know, you're over there, and, you know, you're over there playing, so you have a lot of free time. You can walk around and check stuff out, you know. Right. But uh, but I like, you know, I like Italy. Um, went to Ireland once, and that was really enjoyable. The, the people in Ireland are really, really gracious, cool people. You know, um, I was stationed in Hawaii <laughs> back in the day, you know, and, and played with uh, some slacky Hawaiian slacky bands here and there, and and uh, you know, not no not like club stuff, just jamming with them, you know. Hey. Just uh, did a luau one time, but uh, I like uh, I mean, mainly uh, I do like staying in the states. The problem with flying on aircraft is uh, we're not first class. But, uh, we don't fly first class, man. And, most places that fly bands, you know, they're trying to save money. So often or not, you wind up flying in economy. And right. that's fine for about the first 10 years, but it gets a bit old, you know. I hear that. Uh, and airplanes are not fun. <laughs> yep, yep, I'm in the parish. Yeah, if I could go anywhere in the world, I'd want to go there mostly to visit Jim Morrison's grave site. Have you ever seen that? No, I ain't never been over there. Usually when I'm there, I'm usually either going someplace or I'm on stage, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty much, uh, we can't drive over there, man. So we're, we're pretty much dependent on whoever's driving us around, you know, I feel you. Um, but, for, uh, for those who do not know, how did the nickname, the train come about? <laughs> I think it was cause it rhymed with my name. Gotcha. That's how you get nicknames, man. And, uh, later on people kind of filled in the blanks on why they thought, 
thought my name was the train, you know, a lot of people either uh, attribute it to my playing style, the last drum, or uh, my my plan of attack on stage, you know. But uh, the uh, the reason why I kept the name, well, actually, I, I didn't keep the name. The name kept me. I was, uh, somebody started calling me that years and years ago. Just kind of, just kind of messing with me, you know. I got you. And then uh, a couple of years after I played one place, and they were calling me that. I met these people. They were from, were from Germany, and they remembered my name. But they remember the train. That's how I got that name. Okay. See, nick, nick, nicknames you don't. You never pick your own nickname. Somebody always picks it for you. Mm-hmm. And you better hope. You better hope to God it's a good one because you're going to be stuck with it the rest of your life. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I only have a couple of more questions for you, man. I really appreciate you giving me the time. Um, well, you bet, brother. Uh, Hell, what uh, else? What else can you do? <laughs> I heard a story you told one time when you were uh, you were riding in a car, and you and Shel- Shelton was with you, and uh, he told you told the story about how uh, y'all got in a wreck. And yeah. he got you out of going to jail. And from that, do you have any other crazy, funny stories from the road that come to mind that lines up with that? Let's see here. Quite a few crazy ones. But I remember exactly how some of them go. Uh, the one with one with Shelton was interesting. It wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't that he got me out of going to jail. It was he was driving and I was rolling a joint. Right. And. Uh, a car plowed into the side of us, hit, I can't remember if it was on my side or his side, but it T-boned us. And, uh, and I'm not thinking that he's who he is or who he's related to. I'm just thinking he's a friend of mine. And uh, Shelton's like, well, you know, you could go over and sit on the curb. You know, this is my town. I know everybody, but, you know, you're an outsider, this and that and the other. And I was just thinking, well, hell, if you go to jail, I'll go with you. Right. And, you know, so that's the that's the maybe not, but maybe not the smartest thing. But you know, it's uh, the friendly thing you, to do. If you're loyal with your friends, man, you dance with them, run you. You know, if your friend goes down to jail, you go with them. Right. You know? Well, in your downtime, what other hobbies do you have besides riding your motorcycle? Uh, let's see. Well, let's see hobbies. <laughs> Uh, playing music, oh, that's not really a hobby. It's what I do for a living, right? Um, I guess just uh, yeah, pretty much. That's just about it, man. I mean, when I'm not playing music, I'm either riding my bike or or I'm writing songs. You know, right on. You still not, ride not, on? not 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 much of an excitement, is it? <laughs> you know, I did. What am I here? Yeah, I like to smoke weed, but it's you know, it's not legal yet where we live. Right. And by the time by the time it gets to be legal, I either, I either will have quit for good or I'll be dead by then. <laughs> are, you, are you still close to Austin, Texas? Uh, I saw him when I was calling you. It said Marble Falls, and my grandfather used to live out there. Yeah, actually, I live in uh, North Texas now. I live uh, just a little south of the Texas state, uh, Oklahoma state line. Oh, I got you. Uh, I live way up north. I, I used to live in Austin, but man, Austin got real big and real uh, big city like. And I'm more of a small town guy, you know. Right. Plus, uh, you know, we're down here in the low end, the <clears throat> low end of the pay scale, so to speak, in the music world. So you got to kind of go live where you can afford to live, you know. Are you pretty familiar with Kingsland and Horseshoe Bay area? Yeah, yeah, I used to live out there too. Right, and yeah, like I said, I used to visit my grandfather out there. Um, Wayne, this is the last question I have for you, and once again, it's been an honor to interview you. I will send you the link to it when it's up on YouTube. Um, I just got to ask, you're on tour right now in the United States. What is next for Wayne Hancock? What have you been working on? Have you either written songs or even recorded any ideas since you've released Sling and Rhythm? Oh yeah, man! I've got a whole another notebook full of songs I've written. I've got uh, it's, it's more of the same, man. It's just good, good jumping boogie woogie music, good swing, you know. Uh, actually, talking to Dell Watson about maybe doing an album with him for the next album. Oh, that'd be just cool. like a just just like a split, you know. Maybe put something out on vinyl. Everybody is like going to the 
you know, nobody does CDs anymore. It's just kind of weird, you know. Like, you release things like one to three songs at a time. Yeah, and uh, you know, you put out a record, man. I like, I like something that I can actually hold in my hand, you know, like a vinyl or something. Me too, the physical product, and the, and you yeah. can look at the inner sleeve and read all the the liner notes and whatnot. I've always liked yeah. that too. Yeah, because you know, I don't like I said, I'm I'm not I'm not anti technology. I just I just uh, I like my world, you know. I feel you what you're and, used to. And getting into the cold computer thing, it's sort of. Uh, it's kind of foreign to me, man, you know? So I like getting albums out there. I tell people, you know, you I can't sign your computer. Right. I can't sign what's on your phone. Do you you buy an album from me, you know? If you buy an album from me, I can sign that. Everybody in the band can sign it for all the albums. Do you, you know, do I... Message? Yeah, occasionally, man, you know? I, uh, it's kind of hard to... Uh, see the I got an old fashioned flip I say old fashioned I got an old flip phone that I use so my screen's really tiny on my phone but you can get a picture if someone sends you a picture you're able to look at it right yeah yeah right. I can cause after we got off the phone I was gonna send you two pictures uh, that I took with you I, I want you to I think you'll remember me when I send you this one of us in your van last time we were at the exit in I'm not gonna say what we were doing but <laughs> I'll try, to, I'll try to spark memory. My wife was the one taking the picture, and you and me are giving the double middle fingers, and we look like we were having a good time, to say the least. Yeah, we, we probably were having a good time, man. Right. So, uh, so what you're saying is since Slinging Rhythm, you have a notebook full of ideas, but you haven't gotten to the studio yet? Yeah, we haven't got to the studio yet. You know, I, I only, man, I only got to be in the studio for about a day and a half to put a good record out, you know. Oh, I got it. And, you. You and don't Dale is that many takes, do you? No, nah, we we just do it. Uh, usually, we'll do uh, one or maybe one to three takes of every song, you know, and usually get it right with the third take. I got uh, any any time more spent just to me, man. I mean, obviously, everybody does their recording is different, but I figured out a way where I can do mine live and and. Uh, Spend less money and the less time you're in the studio, that leaves you more time to be on the road, you know? I got you. Well, Wayne, that is all I have today, man. I thanked you a bunch of times, but I'm going to thank you again. And for everybody listening, once again, this is The Ring, The Cage, and The Stage. And today we had none other than Wayne the Train Hancock. And uh, thank you very much, Wayne. Hey, bet. Hey, and one of these days I'll tell you some stories uh -huh. <laughs> about some stuff we've done. I'm just throwing a <laughs> incriminate myself on anything. <laughs> we done some pretty crazy stuff over the years, you yeah. know. Uh, well, you got my number, man, and I will text you the link to when the video's up on YouTube and uh, just let me know if there's anything you might want changed or if let me know if, if it's good. Uh, I'm, I'm sure it will be, brother. I don't don't imagine you'd do me wrong. No, <laughs> well, man, you stay warm up there. and. Uh, We'll do the same. Well, if we the, try to stay out of the snow. And we just we were drove over from South Carolina the other day, and I kind of guess they don't have much good snow moving equipment up there. I'm guessing. Right. You know. I feel you. Well, uh, about it. thanks for everything, man. Once again, my favorite song is the Railroad Blues. So maybe you can play that for me next on your next stop. Well, we'll do it, brother. We'll do it. All right, one. Y'all. I'll be in. Y'all be easy. Right. Oh, and Merry, Merry Christmas to y'all, man. Merry Christmas to you too, Wayne. Sure. All right, All take right. it easy.